This is John Logston. I'm with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, viewers and listeners, wherever you are in the world right now. You are tuned in to Hellblazer Biz with your one and only host, and me, Chris Gordon. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. Again, I say you can find me as Hellblazer Biz on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Please, please, please go follow me and subscribe. Also on YouTube, iTunes, you can find me as Hellblazer Biz. Please subscribe and share. And also, if you in the UK, Amazon Prime UK, I have a channel on there now. And also Vimeo and Roku Worldwide. If you are subscribers, please go and find Hellblazer Biz and subscribe and watch. Yay! Anyway, this interview is an author, which is slightly different for me. However, I wanted to bring this author on because I have been listening to these audiobooks for a while now. And believe me, they have me crying out with laughter. Uh, I've not listened to all of them yet, so I'm still planning my way through. But I should strongly, strongly suggest, if you like comedy, this is like Terry Pratchett on speed. Terry Pratchett mixed with Monty Python. There's Blackadder. It's everything. It's all that kind of comedy. Police Academy, Airplane, all that kind of humour. They're absolutely fantastic. The ones I've listened to so far is the Onanokin series, which follows uh, the wizard Wizfiddle. Ah, my name's Wizfiddle. Not that that's a good accent uh, <laughs> from the... Uh, <laughs> from the audio and that's it's absolutely it's just hilarious you, you just have, i can't explain it or you find out soon anyway and the other was platoon f which is like a sci-fi based one and it's oh my gosh i cry laughing at that it is very irre- irreverent humor but absolutely hilarious um so yeah without further ado i introduce to you one of my favorite authors of the moment is john p logster everyone today's guest is the author very funny author is John P. Logston of many series, amongst them the Onan Oaken series, the Platoon F series. I'll name those because they're the ones I'm going through at the moment. But there's also, as you say, there is uh, Queen Arthur. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me on that one. And there's yeah. also the Detectives, the Paranormal Detective series as well. And I can't remember the name of those, which is stupid. So I'll just edit that bit out. <laughs> 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 so that's the paranormal police department and um we have uh, a whole bunch of them we have uh different precincts all all over the place so we have like las vegas which is the original netherworld seattle new york badlands southeast asia shadow i think that oh yeah i think that's it i think that's it for that but each one of those um has multiple books in them so we have we're going to be hitting over 30 books in just the paranormal police department this wow. year yeah, so it's pretty that's, crazy. That's pretty impressive. <clears throat> and, yeah. lot of, and very busy, I can imagine. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, so I'm taking time out of your busy writing just to sit and, and chat with me, which is great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, wrap it up. Go on. <laughs> uh, I mean, your style of comedy, John. I mean, I'm quite new to, to yourself. I, mean, uh, I commute a lot, so I listen to what I listen to. The, I've got to say, I listen to the audible side of things, which is where I've picked you up from. Because uh, I mean, I love the likes of Terry Pratchett and and Monty Python, and all basically Monty Python. All my comedy is in your books. I, you know, and that, and I think <laughs> is that where your inspiration come from? I mean, there's, I mean, you, I mean, a lot of people, I guess, would see Terry Pratchett in the Owen and Oaken series, but. This, I see Spike Milligan, I see Peter Sellers, I see Monty Python, the very, uh, what's the word, satirical comedy um, yeah. and, and stuff in, in your works. Is that kind of where you draw it from? Well, A, I'm really glad you said that. <laughs> because, <laughs> whew, I mean, yeah. Yes, I'm doing it right. Um, basically, uh, it, well, it's kind of interesting. I started out uh, with the comedy of Benny Hill. Okay, um, yep. Love that. Because Hill. over here, we couldn't, I'm in America, obviously. Over here, we couldn't get, um, you know, most of the, the shows when I was younger. So mm-hmm. what happens at like 11 o'clock at night when, you know, your parents think you're asleep and everything else, I go sneak out and I'm like flicking around channels. Now, honestly, I'm flicking <laughs> around the channels looking for the wavy stuff where I might be able to see a naked girl or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> and so then I, I uh, turned the channel. I saw this uh, thing with uh, Benny Hill. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I'm I was just a kid, but I'm watching it and I was loving it. I mean, it was hilarious. I was like, la- I I woke my mom up, you know, and then she's like, "What are you doing?" And then she comes out, and of course, that's when he's running around with you know oh, girls man. that don't have tops <laughs> on, and, and she was just like, 
And she goes back to, she didn't yell at me or anything. She just shook her head and went back to bed. I was like, thank you. <laughs> right? And anyway, so um, watching that uh, started me off with all the things in Benny Hill. Like, for example, one of the things that it, it made me laugh so hard was when Benny Hill said, you know, a lot of people, a lot of men look at breasts differently. Me, I look at them like this. <laughs> and I was just like, yes. And I started howling. Well, then I started hunting down as much as I could on everything else. Yeah. I started getting into Monty Python. I started getting into uh, things of that nature. Um, then stuff on our side, you know, is picking up too. Obviously, Peter Sellers um, mm -hmm. love, you know, all of the Pink Panther stuff and everything. Um, things start picking up on our side on on things like the movie Airplane and yeah. you know. Naked Gun uh -huh. and, um, you know, Loaded Weapon, all these types of movies that, that are coming out. Plus, I grew up on the 70s sitcoms and 80s sitcoms and everything else over here, mm -hmm. which were pretty silly in and of themselves. And I didn't do a lot of reading, uh, actually. Uh, and when I did do reading, it was all serious. It was, you know, Isaac Asimov, uh, Gregory Benford, stuff like that. So it was right. all it was all pretty, um, you know, serious uh, stuff, not, not really comedy at all. Um so, yeah, everything was influenced by that. I actually didn't read my first Terry Pratchett book until I want to say it was 2012 or 2013. Yeah. So I had already written uh, the first Ononakin and the uh, Starliner. And then the second I was halfway through the second Ononakin book when I picked up Terry Pratchett. So mm -hmm. believe it or not, uh, Ononakin is not inspired by Terry Pratchett or Discworld. <laughs> I love Discworld to death. I mean, yeah. if I could read another 5,000 of them, that would be awesome. But, you know. But um, it was really inspired by, you know, all those earlier things, the Monty Python, plus uh, two th around 2000, Lord of the Rings comes out, Harry Potter comes mm -hmm. out, on, on, you know, the whole thing. And then also um, I was reading uh, Robert Asprin, which was Myth Adventures. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, a fun series. And um, then there was John DeChancey and just other authors like that who, who were uh, John Moore, I think, is the other one. Um, who, who has a, a series called Bad Prince Charlie. It's not the series, but that's the name of it. Uh, mm -hmm. The book, Bad Prince Charlie and the Hero, uh, the Beginner's Guide to Heroics, which is freaking hilarious. <laughs> um, so after reading all those and seeing Lord of the Rings and, you know, all these things, I picked up a book called Board of the Rings, which <laughs> was kind of meh, and it was okay. But um, I, I, you know, I, I was having a good laugh from it and yeah. everything else. But, uh, so then I said, all right, that's it. Um you know, I'm doing this. And so I was taking writing courses at the time, early 2000. And I just started every time I would try to write anything as a kid, for example, anytime, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I was like 13 years old and I'm trying to write serious science fiction. And almost, <laughs> almost every single time I would get like a chapter or so in and I, it was serious. And I couldn't handle it. And so something would happen. I ended up creating a little series called Robot Boner. And it was, <laughs> A robot, you know, tries to save the day, and every single time, right when he's about to face the big moment, mm -hmm. he'd get an erection. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody would stop and go, oh, my God, you know, all that <laughs> stuff is what they would do. And so I ended up, my, my wife, then girlfriend, because we've been together since we were 13, mm -hmm. she... Um, she would be reading these things and be really into it. And then she'd just start busting out laughing. And she'd just go, <laughs> yeah, throw it at me, you know. And um, I could never get beyond uh, maybe 10 pages, if that. Of yeah. Siri, before it would turn into some, you know, type of a uh, dick joke or something. So I just couldn't help <laughs> it. So there you have it. Cool, cool. So that sounds great. I mean, it sounds like you've never grown up, which is fantastic. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, channel the 13 year old in here, and boom, there you go. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the best way to be. I've got to say, you mentioned airplane and stuff like that. It's, I mean, even in my life now, I've got my 12 year old son, um, and somebody goes, We need to go to a hospital. And my wife would be like, What is it? That's a big building where sick people go, but it's not important right now. <laughs> and she's just I, like, oh, gosh. <laughs> I live for the moments when people go, surely you're not serious. I am serious. Don't call me Shirley. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, it is. It's just, you can't believe it. There's just so many little one-lining quips in there. It's like, you know, yeah. what a day to quit drinking is another favorite of ours, which, which goes around the offices. <laughs> and it just keeps going. Yeah. It just doesn't stop. I, mean, I, I did, I've got to admit, I think it was, where was it? It was at a place, well, one of them places about five, six years ago, and we literally went on for an entire afternoon, and all we did, the whole, it was a, we had a game, and the whole game was just like, you've got to do either Naked Gun or Airplane Quotes all afternoon, and it was great, and my, my, my colleague caught me on it, because I went off to a meeting, uh, it was quite an important meeting at the time, and he goes, because we're all counting on you or something like that. <laughs> that I can't remember that line now. Well, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. we're all done remember, we're all counting on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Oh, I'm so not... tell me, do you, do you like it when Scraps grabs a hold of your leg and rubs up and down? <laughs> You ever been to a Turkish prison? <laughs> you ever seen a grown man naked? Yeah. <laughs> so that is where I can see parfait coming from. Is that coming? <laughs> yeah, yes. Exactly, yeah. No, no. Where parfait actually came from was the. Um, uh, it's interesting that you're asking that. Um, Police academy. Oh, Commandant Lassard. Commandant <laughs> Lassard, right? Exactly. But not because he was that way, but because of the scene where he was at the podium. Oh, yeah, Mahoney was under, yeah. <laughs> Mahoney was under, and the prostitute was with him, and then he's, so he's like, <laughs> and then he's walking away, and he turns and looks back, and Mahoney points <laughs> and goes like this, and winks at him, and he's just like, <laughs> that whole scene, I was just like, what if that was parfait, but he was kind of like, ooh, you know, <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, it worked out, so. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah that's pretty cool. Uh, it kind of, uh, Kind of got that. There's actually a sci-fi convention coming up in June in Manchester near me, and you've got Mahoney, you've got um, Michael Winslow, you know, the one who does the noises, Sergeant mm -hmm. Callahan, little Leslie Jones, they're all coming. I was like, oh, come on, <laughs> Peace Academy Gold. <laughs> well, the the, uh, the big guy passed away, I think. Um, Bubba, Bubba Smith, he did recently. Oh, Bubba, no, not just him. Yeah, not just him. Um, no, the the, uh, the guy with the gun. Who oh, Tackleberry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he passed away. Man, you know these names. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I grew up on a, I grew up on my exactly how I grew up on Monty Python, Police Academy, yeah, everything is. <laughs> that's yeah, why. Well, I, probably you, you, you are the absolute perfect reader for me then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is why, as I say, there's so many times I say because I listen to the audible books and, and I, I've got an hour or did have an hour to commute each way. So I was just sitting there and so many people just stare at me because I'll be crying with laughter. Just <laughs> so, awesome. It's just great. So. Awesome. So yeah, perfect really, because it's, it's, it's perfect my comedy, and so I'm quite really glad I've actually found you, because <laughs> the comedy was, oh, it's perfect, well, right? I, I listen to audiobooks, and I listen to the serious ones, and it's like, oh come on, I'm driving, I want some fun, and then, yeah, I was like, who's this? I'm like, right, okay, let's try it, I think it was only an Oakin one at first, I said it was a book bundle, so I was like, I'll get into this, and with, yeah. Yeah, so within minutes... I was like, hey, well, was, my name's Wiz Fiddle. <laughs> you know? Wiz Fiddle. Exactly. Well, Just is an awesome narrator. He's just fantastic. Yeah. And he really brought that world to life. He, he did. I mean, all the different characters he does. I mean, when you get to me in Platoon F, you hear a lot of different... <laughs> I go crazy with the voices, but he's just... He's so good. Yeah. He's, so He's yeah. also going to be doing Queen Arthur. Um, that sounded oh, brilliant. Wrong. He's going to be... <laughs> he's going to be narrating Queen Arthur. <laughs> he might be doing him, too. I have no idea. Okay. But... Uh, Cool. So I was going to ask this later on. Ask it now. How did you actually reach out to get just involved in the first place? Just the opposite, actually. Um, okay. I had an ad running on Facebook uh, for a big book bundle or something like that, where it had samples of all the different uh, books that I had. Mm -hmm. And just saw it, and he bought it, and he started reading it through. And then he contacted um, his uh, uh, Matt, is part of Living Audio. So let me explain. So Matt is, both of those guys are over there mm -hmm. in the UK. Uh, Matt is, owns this company called Living Audio CIC, and it's, um, <laughs> it was done for people who are blind, because Matt's okay. blind. And um, so he was basically creating audio books uh, as a nonprofit type situation, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, <clears throat> so that the, the blind could get it. He ended up uh, getting a series called, um, it's not Harry Potter, it's, oh crap, I can't remember. Um, Oh well, it's it's like a uh, it was a fan fiction thing okay. that went off with Harry Potter, and um, anyway, uh, they got the rights to do it as long as they only did it. They didn't do it commercially, so right. they ended up doing that. Matt was working at the BBC uh, doing sound production and stuff like that mm -hmm. for a while, <clears throat> and then he's you know now doing his own thing. So just started reading, uh, you know, was reading for him, and then um, but they were just doing you know <clears throat> kind of behind the scenes quiet stuff and everything yeah. else. And just read this, and he contacted Matt and said, listen, I read a couple of chapters of this. I think you should listen to it. Mm -hmm. Matt said, holy crap, this is really cool. Let's see if the guy will let us do the books for him. Yeah. And I was just, you know, I had gotten probably five or six, um, you know, people who had contacted me and asked to do the books. And, um, I mean, they were all good, but there was just something about Just that just, I mean, it just knocked it out of the park. And so I heard that. And I actually had brought my wife in, and I was like, you got to hear this. And she was listening to it. She started crying. That's how impressed she was with the whole thing. And I was just like, all right. So I contacted them, and I said, hey, well, let's just get on a Skype you know, thing. It was a FaceTime or whatever. And mm -hmm. so <clears throat> we get on the call, and I didn't, I didn't even think time zones at all. And so we started the call at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 
and it was like 11 o'clock at night my time by the time we were starting to wrap up the call. Oh, said, wow. That's a whole lot. Your time. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's 4 a.m. I was like, oh, crap, you know, and so then I felt kind of bad about it. Yeah, they actually approached me on it, and, um, you know, I-, I thought they just did a fantastic job. By the way, Just also narrated my science fiction book that's called Starliner. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you've had, if you check that out. I'm like, yeah, it, we're actually changing the name to the Church of Automation or Church of Automation. It's about robots finding religion. It's pretty funny. But anyway, <laughs> um, if you uh, check that out, you'll hear him narrating that one too. I, he didn't want to do it because, well, I mean, I'm sorry. He did want to do it. Mm-hmm. Matt was unsure. Matt was just like, you know, usually sci-fi is American author or American narrators. And, you know, fantasy is is UK. And I was just like, I don't care. Matt, if he wants to do it, let him do it. So he did it. I think he nailed it. I think it's fantastic, and it's it's pretty funny. I mean, it's it's a good, it's kind of Ononikin in um, style in space, whereas Platoon F is way more crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I've got to say, yeah, Ononikins, yeah, they, they are totally different different um, genres there, <laughs> and 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 settings and worlds. Because I mean, Ononikin, I, I love the way you manage to get current affairs and yeah. <laughs> and and. Modern items and things, and just rename them slightly into the into the universe. Especially, you know, I mean, more so the platoon F that I could remember. Uh, I can't say because you know, but there's so much in the Owen and Oaken as well. There's cities and Gaffy's gadgets and and, just, <laughs> and, and the yeah, whirly uh, gig, the whirly gig as well. Things like. <laughs> I don't think I can reach it because it's way over there. But what I was going to do is reach over there and show you the map because I don't know if you've seen the map of Ononikin. But what Ononikin yeah. is really, you have you have the upper world and the underworld, mm-hmm. yeah. right? The upper world is basically your Lord of the Rings type place. The underworld is really modeled on you and us. So yeah. the UK and, and the US kind of merging together and everything else. So everybody in the upper world hears stories about all oh, the vampires are evil and, and the trolls and everything else. But the trolls and the vampires are just us. They're just normal people living their lives, <laughs> yeah. doing their stuff and everything else. And, you know, they don't see themselves that way. <laughs> <You know? laughs> They're just like, but, but, you know, if you don't do that, but it's funny because in the in the uh, underworld, they'll have like they'll tell their kids stories about how, you know, uh, the humans are going to come get you if you don't eat your if you don't eat your dinner. <laughs> you know, that's <laughs> parents scare the shit out of their kids that way. You know, the opposite direction. So yeah, it is. It is great. And I say I, I got that the, the the two worlds as well. It's like yeah, it was just to immerse yourself back into the seedy world of what actually reality is compared to the, the glorified world at the top. It, it's pretty much, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Now, um, with you and Chris as well, how, how does it work with you and Chris, uh, Chris Young as well? How do you guys write together? Do you do you actually sit in a room together, or, or is it, or are you different parts of the country? So you just like write a bit and then send it across, or? Yes. Yeah, so um, it depends on the series that we're working on. So if we take Ononikin specifically, um, what we do is he's in California. I'm, I'm in uh, North Carolina. So we are literally on the opposite sides of <laughs> yeah. the country. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get on um, Zoom, Skype, whatever. And um, we'll, we'll kind of say, OK, <clears throat> what is it we're trying to accomplish with this particular book? Now, with Ononikin, it's easy because Ononikin is typically a day in the life book. So we basically just kind of like point at a map and go, okay, this is going to happen here. So let's mm-hmm. grab a character who's a vampire then. And then boom. And then we kind of do that day in a life feel. Um, so we'll come up with the idea. We'll say, you know, we'll have some laughs coming up with just the, the basic plot and everything of what we're going to do. We don't over plot. Um, well, not can we do more so and platoon F probably also, but um, with things like the paranormal police department, no, it, it's literally just, okay, guy from here to here. This is a general idea of what we're going for, and then I just write, and I'll sit down and just, I mean, the first book in that series was, uh, took me one week, and it's because I just flew through it, I knew what I was doing, yeah. and <clears throat> just had fun. Um, and so then, after we come up with that, that basic plot idea, um, it's usually like one sentence per chapter, you know, mm-hmm. just gives you a basic idea of what we're doing, then I will go into a script writing program, okay. and I will sit there and just write out the script. So mm-hmm. no dialogue, I mean, no um, uh, scenes or anything else, not, nothing laying out description or anything else, just boom. I'll have like one thing where it'll, it'll say like, you know, they're at the tavern or something yeah. like that. And then we'll sit there and go through it. Um, <clears throat> then we get back on a call after I've got like four or five chapters done of that. And I'll say, okay, you be this guy, I'll be this guy and so on. And we basically act it out, you know, of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And that's when we sit there and add stuff in. Once we're done with the script, then we'll turn around and I'll, I'll then, you know, put the book around the whole script. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. you have to change words and dialogue, of course, as you go on, because things change. But mm-hmm. um, So I'll do all that. 
and then script uh, uh, Chris will read uh, the the final, and he'll give feedback on it, and then I will you know make any changes that we need that we agree upon, and then it goes out uh, at that point. Now that's Ononakin. Okay. Um, <laughs> with um, uh, with Platoon F, Chris didn't want to be involved in that at first. <laughs> right. And it's just like, uh, I don't think that's going to go. And I said, well, I'm just going to write the first one anyway. So I, I wrote the first one, uh, SSMC Reluctant, and then I handed it over to him. He was just like, eh, I don't know, man. <laughs> it ends up selling like, I don't know, 3,000 copies in the first like couple of months or something like that. And he was yeah. like, yeah, I think I'd like to be involved. I'm like, yeah, I bet. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, we do the same kind of concept with that that we do with Ononican. Mm -hmm. um, but those are the only two series that we really do that well oh, and also Queen Arthur will do that as well but yeah. uh, but when it comes down to um, you know like the PPD no it's it's mostly uh, just hey let's come up with some ideas we do and then I pants it and just fly through that uh, uh, you know book series which honestly is a lot more fun but that's because that series is meant to be high action high octane quick laughs and, and you know that mm -hmm. kind of thing whereas the other ones are a little bit more they have to be more thought out because you have this big world that you really got to make sure that if something happens down in this area, it can't, you know what I'm saying? You have how yeah. you impact different spaces. We've got to be careful. So, yeah. Cool. That's actually really interesting to hear. Um, Cause I say normally, I, I, I don't normally converse with your authors, especially ones where you do do in joint and when you're across the country from each other. So it's, it's really sort of interesting to hear how, how you can collaborate. I mean, technology is, you know, obviously come on oh. so well. It's, I guess that's a complete blessing. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's like, I mean, I'm sat over here in the UK at the moment chatting to you over in North Carolina. So it's, it's like we're almost in the same room. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say almost. I've got my yeah. DVDs. You've got the, you've got your, your artwork behind you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Some, yeah, so, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see how something like, you know, your dual writing and joint collaboration can happen. It doesn't really matter on location. It doesn't matter. It's not inhibited to anything like that. So it's, it's uh, and, and how you sort of work with each other as well is great. Yeah, and, and once a year we do get together um, and just kind of you know have some fun, just hang out and stuff. Mm -hmm. and we'll do some writing ideas and everything else, but for the most part, just hanging out, you know. And then. yeah, how did so, you how did you meet? <clears throat> uh, actually, we met at a uh, taking a keto, um, okay. <clears throat> which um, yeah, we we met there and and. Uh, we kept getting paired up, mm -hmm. um, and so you know, after the <clears throat> thing was over and everything else, we just got to talking. And, and um, I happened to have an Isaac Asimov book in my car, and as we were you know talking over by my car, he was like, "Oh, I love that book." And and so then we started talking about science fiction, and then so on. And next thing you know, boom! But we met in like 1990. Uh, then we worked together in the uh, video games industry for I don't know, uh, probably about 10 years, and then after that. Um, you know, he stayed in California and I came to the East Coast. So. All right, excellent, excellent. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was just thinking, I was just thought of another airplane quote. Sorry, just for that random. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that, that is great that, um, to, to sort of, you know, that you, you do the collaboration and the meeting up and, and having fun as well. But it's, uh, from, from starting out way back then to coming to where you are now, it's. it's <laughs> It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And it's funny because he's like he's almost ten years older than me, right. and so um, I'm just like you know he's I think he's hitting sixty this year, mm -hmm. and so I said I said man we got to hurry up and plot. <laughs> yeah, I, <can>. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get as many as I can. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you use and abuse. <laughs> exactly. I was like pretty soon you're gonna be hiding your own Easter eggs, man. We got to hurry up. <laughs> 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 with the characters, do you, when you when you do the characterizations, are any of them built on people you might know? Um, any of the personalities that you've come across that you know? Um, I can't think of anyone that you might know that has any trolls or giants in the world. But then again, this is a strange world we live in. <laughs> Not really. Uh, you know, it, it really comes down to uh, typically amalgamations of people. Um, so. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I worked in the corporate world for a very long time. So, you know, you'll, you're you're going to see a lot of that corporate stuff, like you were saying, mm -hmm. come into the things, like the ridiculousness of things uh, that, that happen um, and, and so on. Like, uh, I mean, I think you probably, have you gotten to Bob the Zombie yet? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, Half East Park and how the, the way that, you know, Perkter has to deal with the, his boss and all that kind of crap. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that that happens and everything else. So. 
Not really, no. It, it, it just comes down to I will create a character. Well, usually characters just show up in my head, um, and then they'll just sit there, and, and that's going to sound really weird. There you go. Oh, look at the time. Um, but uh, it, I have, like, thousands of characters in my head, and they will just sit there and talk. Oh, I want yeah. I, got an, I got an idea, and all that kind of crap. I'm just like, ah, oh, geez. And it's just like, you know, as my wife says, take all, the, all, of, the, all the pills, John, not just the pretty ones. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so they'll just sit there and, and do their thing. So I, I'll come up with a character uh, idea, and I'll just you know write out a name. And once I write out a name, instantly I have this visual of what they look like, what the da da da, how they sound, and then I will put them in some scenario. So I'll say, okay, they're going to you know uh, the grocery store, mm-hmm. uh, and or they have to go get their license renewed for their car, or whatever it is. And I'll, I'll sit there and do that, uh, just throwaway scenes, and see what they do. And so then they'll sit there and start, you know, <clears throat> doing. It's, there's a funny story about this with um, it was Wiz Fiddle actually. Um, I had Wiz Fiddle going down this alley. It was a dark alley, and he's just like, it, it just stopped. I couldn't get anything out. It's kind of like you know your writer's block. I couldn't get anything out, mm-hmm. and it's like. Yeah, I need you to go down this alley. And, and I, I swear, it was kind of like hearing, I'm not going down that alley. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, you have to go down the alley. Would you go down the alley? I'm like, well, no, but I'm not you. I'm not the character in a story. Go down the alley. I'm not going down the alley. So like, and then I'm like, now I'm getting in a fight with myself. So now I'm just kind of like this. Look, I am God. <laughs> you will go down that alley. And the, rea- the response was hilarious. I don't believe in you. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. I have an atheist character <laughs> who doesn't believe in me. And I'm writing him. And I'm like, yeah. he never went down the alley. <laughs> we changed the book. <laughs> but it was a good lesson because what it taught me was that you have to let the character, you come up with the characters, you put them in a scene. And then if you, and a lot of authors can do this where they can just say, you know what, I'm going to, every little piece, I'm going to nail it down what it's going to be before I even start writing. Yeah. But for me, it, I am so character focused in, mm-hmm. in everything I do that when it comes down to the character, if that character doesn't want to go down the alley, I just say, well, where do, what are you going to do then? And then they go, oh, I'm going to climb the building or whatever. And I just go, oh, that's actually more fun. And what ends up happening, I don't even know what's going to happen in most of these scenes. I'm typing and I'm just as excited to find out what's going to happen. So <laughs> next thing you know, it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm going like this yeah. and then you know, I'm getting a knock at the door. Hey, it's two in the morning. Shouldn't you be in bed? Oh, oh crap. You know? <laughs> Cause, <laughs> yeah. Cause I want to know what happens next too. a lot of times. And it's, so it, it's, it's a weird life. <laughs> <laughs> sounds it, sounds it, but it sounds a fun one as well. Like, to be fair, it's like, it is. To, like you say, if you've got that kind of artistic and that creativity, just to just flow it out like it does. It's it's something that you know it should. Well, it is. It's treasured in books. It's treasured obviously everywhere. Uh, and there are a lot of people who actually re- who do really enjoy reading and listening to the, you know to the stories uh, and <laughs> and, the, and the hilarious uh, tales of, of Wiz Fiddle and Gung. I, I've got to say, I've, who, which is your favourite to write out? Though after I'll, I'll do Platoon, but which one out of Owen and Oaken is your favourite character to write? I guess it was probably a difficult one. <clears throat> It is difficult. I mean, you have a soft spot for Whistle because he was the first. Um, honestly, it would probably be the bad guys. I, I, I like Treneth. I like uh, mm. Stallone. Um, mostly because they are so pompous and into themselves. And then, you know, every time they get knocked down, they're just like, you know, <laughs> like, like, like the scene with Stallone and, and the, when the uh, orc or ogre uh, knocks on the door at the hotel room. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it, but yeah, I mean that kind of thing. And, and to see him, he's all like primitive proper, <laughs> and then he's like, <laughs> it's just like yes. <laughs> so uh, I, I like writing those guys, but I mean, uh, Winston will probably be my favorite uh, from that. As far as which character do I like the most? I mean, Gungren because he's just such a he's got such heart. Yeah, you know? I was actually going to say exactly the same. I think Gungren's my favorite. It's like, it's better, I was just thinking it was because. He goes, oh, he's the best. He goes, no, no, Gungren. He's like, you are the, are the best. He goes, no, that's what I said. I is the best. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> of course, sorry, I don't have to do it. That's my, that's my really bad impressions of just doing. <laughs> well, I, or, or the other one. Yeah, like, is, um, uh, I'm not going to do the impressions because I can't. <laughs> but um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Are you ready? Yo, yes, I are. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, you am what? Ready. <laughs> 
well, why are you telling me that? You, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm just like, no, I just, oh, forget it. <laughs> it doesn't get, it can, it can go on for, you know, quite a while. So I'll write a few lines as well, reading it backwards and forwards. It's just, you can hear the frustration with wind, just the lines of, of, of Winsford all just like, well, oh, come on. <laughs> it, it's funny. It's funny because it, it is a, I mean, when you do comedy, you end up, kind of keeping to theme even throughout various books so mm-hmm. like for example uh, i'm going to queen arthur real quick here uh, i know you haven't checked it out but uh um the the king of scotland is also named king arthur right, right. so um Artie is is what he goes by he says you know he's talking in his scottish accent and so mm-hmm. he'll instead of saying knight he'll say net right <laughs> And so he'll go like this. He'll say, um, he says, yeah, they're at our border, uh, my lord, right? And he goes, I guess, are you talking about the nets? Like that. And he goes, I guess, I don't, I don't think there are any nets at the border. <laughs> he goes, what? But you said they were at the border. He goes, their knights are. Right, the nets. And he goes, I guess, he goes, uh, okay. He says, no, it's night. He goes, net. Night. Net. <laughs> he goes, okay, what is it when the moon is out, sire? He goes, net. <laughs> and he goes, no, it's night like that. And he goes, don't correct me again. <laughs> you know, he keeps on doing it. So it's that kind of thing where you have that. But the Queen Arthur, I'm going to jump there real quick. But the, the Queen Arthur thing started because I'm driving down the road. My, my wife was actually driving. And I'm like, I'm not sure what to do next. I want to do something different. You know, mm-hmm. we had done all these things. And, and she says, um, you know, she says, what about Arthurian? I'm just like, Ugh, I don't like Arthurian stuff. And she says, well, yeah, but Arthurian your way. And I was just like, like, what do you mean? She says, you know, like something about King Arthur. She says, how about Queen Arthur? And I was just like, oh, Arthur and Drag. And she, was just like, <laughs> she goes, exactly. And I was just like, interesting. And then it hit me. I was just like, I can imagine them in the future. Guinevere and Arthur are in a porn shop. And they're looking <laughs> around. And they happen to see, you know, the the fakies, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> and they're looking around. And, and she's just like, oh, my gosh, this is incredible. It's so realistic. It's this, it's that. And he goes, yes, it really is, blah, blah. And she says, and the best part? No splinters, right? And instantly I'm like, writing this book, you know, <laughs> that it's just, that's what started off Queen Arthur, next thing you know, boom. And that one is heavily Monty Python, mm-hmm. massively Monty Python. I mean, so all the dirty bits in Monty Python, there they are. Um, it, it's that, that was the influence for that. So I, that's, that one's really funny. I think you'll, you'll have a blast, but that's not going to be out on audio probably this year, hopefully cool. next year. Well, I'll be, I'll be buying the paperbacks as well because I think uh, <laughs> I enjoy a good read. So I'll be get, I'll, 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 I'll support you in that way as well because I think uh, now I've listened to them, I'd like to read them as well. And that's, that's what you say with the themes as well. You've got um, uh, Lieutenant Moon as well with the something that very probably looked very suspicious there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Again, that's just that, that to me just rings airplane and a lot. Yeah, and and actually, I do the voice of Lieutenant Moon, so yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can actually do that. One. But um, it's funny. I actually have a um, you know, on my phone, um, you have all of the different. Uh, let's see if I can find it real quick. You have all of the different sounds, record plus, um, of of the different uh, people. Right. And so, uh, as I'm doing these things, you know, here's Hank Moon. This is perfect. So, here's, let's see if you can hear this. Let's see. Let me crank up the volume. My name is Hank Moon. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hank Moon. Hello. So, um, and, you know, that kind of thing. So, I, I have like 110 voices in here mm-hmm. of all the things that, that, you know, you have to do with each one of them. So, like Sandu. My name is Sandu, <laughs> and I'm not a merry man. Now, if you notice that, if you're a Star Trekker, uh, Star Trekky uh, person, a Trekker, whatever you want yeah, to call it. Wolf, uh, dressed as a... <laughs> yeah, Wolf, dressed as a... Yeah. I'm not a man. Yeah, that was the whole idea of that. I was just like, that's Sandu. And so trying to come up with all these... The main characters are almost always me. Because mm-hmm. uh, that's you're narrating it as, you know, yeah. it's easier to do it that way. And then um, the narration for Platoon F, the actual narrator for Platoon F, comes from the Dukes of Hazard. Okay. I don't know what that is. But uh, the Dukes of Hazard was a TV show here. Yeah. Uh, and, you yeah, okay, show, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, so you have the just the good old boy. You know, you have yeah. that kind of thing. And the guy who did it said, now those boys got themselves in trouble. You know, you'd have all that. And so I tried to do Platoon F a mm-hmm. little like that. Not too much, but a little yeah. like that. Um, because it kind of felt like a space, you know, cowboy thing to me. So... <laughs> Anyway, fantastic. I mean, the stories and characters can be politi- obviously as we move on to political into F now can be politically incorrect, and some <laughs> can be, <laughs> downright are. 
<laughs> but they're not. I don't think they are in a derogatory way or anything like that. It's, 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 um, they're playful and satirical, and that's where obviously the Monty Python, the Benny Hill the airplane comes from. Have you had or received any criticism at all? Because I know the world we live in. I'm sure you must have had loads. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Um, so first thing that, that people say is interesting about uh, Platoon F is uh, that uh, Chris and I are homophobes, which I think is hilarious because the whole purpose of what we're doing with Parfait is that the rest of the people don't care. Yeah. That you know, and, and he's the only one who's really caring about this whole thing. But mm -hmm. by the time they get to the, you know, they they basically are supporting him and saying, "Dude, just be who you are. And quit trying to hide it. The fact that you're hiding it is the problem." You know, yeah. and that that's when he's just like, "Really?" And he's like, "Yeah." He says, "We don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, we support you for what you are. We don't care." But people never get that far. They only get to the, this part, you know, where this guy's in the closet and he's he acts out, bursts out, and everything else. And it is comedy, so yeah, it's going to be exaggerated. That's yeah. the way it is. But everyone is exaggerated, mm -hmm. you know. Thing. But but people are sensitive to what they're sensitive to, and I understand that. I mean, but if you don't give something a chance, then you will automatically just jump to the conclusion that oh, this guy's a homophobe. Totally not homophobe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, and it, it, it's it's that kind of thing that gets me. Every single thing that we pick on. Mm -hmm. um, is for the purpose of actually showing it the other direction and basically saying, hey, you know what, don't pick on this shit. And, and it sounds weird to say that, but we always, we're very progressive actually, and so we always actually end up supporting the thing that's going on that seems like it's that. Mm -hmm. So, But if you don't do that, in my mind, number one, I mean, look, it's comedy, and you can't please everybody. You're going to piss off people. And and when people, you know, write to me and say, oh, this is crap and blah, 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 I'm just like, cool, go find somebody else to read. I mean, I don't give a shit. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's totally fine. Comedy is comedy, and you can't apologize for it. Um, you know, I'll, I'll make the joke when somebody goes, I guess, well, I'm going to go check out your Queen Arthur books. All right, all right I apologize ahead of time. You know, I'll joke <laughs> like that with them. Um, but, uh, but the reality is it, it's comedy. And there was a time where it was a lot harder than it is now, but mm -hmm. you learn – that you just can't please everybody. And people like you will get it, right? You'll understand it. I write for you. I don't write for those other people because, yeah. I mean, they're uptight prudes. Fuck them. I don't care. I mean, <laughs> that's the way I see it. It's like, sorry. It's just like there's plenty of stuff out there for you to read. You don't like this? Great. That's cool. But the people who do get it are the people who are, are, are going to understand that there's a lot of layers to this onion. It's not just a case of, oh, let's just bash and make fun of stuff. I make fun of everybody equally. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't care who you are or what you do. I will make fun of you constantly. I mean, that's all it is. And people make fun of me. I don't care. Mm -hmm. It's totally, um, you know, this is the whole police academy, Monty Python, everything else. That's what it's about. And um, so, yeah, I definitely get criticism. The the funnest one I ever got on Platoon F was when a guy wrote to me or, or put a review on the book and said that I must be on drugs to have written this. And <laughs> I... I broke the cardinal rule and replied to him, and I said, well, I'm not on drugs, but um, blah, 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 blah. So he replies back, hey, I'm really sorry I said the thing about you being on drugs, but such and such, 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 you must be on drugs. <laughs> I was like, well, first of all, thanks for the apology and then saying I was on drugs again. I'm still not on drugs since the last time we conversed, uh, and so on. And so then he replied, I replied, and I said, why don't we just take this offline? Here's my email address. Email me. So he emails me. Mm -hmm. Now we start talking. Now I find out this guy is like 70-something or whatever, and he was in the military, and he thought that the SSMC Reluctant was going to be hard science fiction. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, oh, no. It's not going to be. And I said, he says, I don't understand it. I said, think about shows like, like recent, more recent shows, The Simpsons, Family Guy, mm -hmm. South Park, things like that. And he goes, I guess, I don't know any of those shows. I'm like, right, you go, <laughs> right? And so next thing you know, we start talking about this. He says, oh, I guess I just didn't understand yourself. I said, why don't you try this Ononican world and see if that's maybe a little yeah. more your speed. And so he tried it, and he says, oh, this is fun. I like this. He's I get this, you know, this better, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. Next thing you know, this guy uh, sends me. I wish I had it to show you, but it's it's stored away. He has a he showed uh, sent me a pen that he turned, a wood mm -hmm. pen that he turned, and it was the last one he ever turned. Wow. And he, and he was just, I mean, yeah, it was like, so you, you basically take this massive criticism that this guy has given you and you just kind of ended up talking like that and everything else. We haven't talked, you know, in years, so I don't, I hopefully it's okay. But anyway, but it was just interesting. So that was like one of the strangest and harshest criticisms that I ever got. Cause it was more than just you're doing drugs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, and then in the email, it was pretty heated for a while. And the mm -hmm. next thing you know, he was just like, Hey, I want to send you something. And I'm just like, 
I don't know that I really want to. <laughs> tick, tick, <laughs> you know? tick, tick. <laughs> you know, and so, uh, but it was this beautiful pen, and um, he was just like, you know, I, 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 he used to fix planes, and he had his mm -hmm. own planes and all this kind of stuff, and he said, well, I don't do that anymore, but then I was turning this, he says, but now I can't even do that anymore, and this was the last pen I ever made, and I, I you know, really have enjoyed our conversations, and I was just like, holy crap, I mean, it's amazing how things can turn around, yeah. and then he understood, he was like, well, you're making fun of, you know, uh, gay people and all this kind of stuff. I'm not. I said, look at it. You know, look yeah. at it further and, and you'll see. And so, anyway, but yeah, that happens. What are you going to do? Fair enough. Perfect. <laughs> a really, really great answer about that. Well, <laughs> I, would, I did want to hear what you said about that because I love comedy and I think comedy has to break those barriers. And mm -hmm. that's what the whole thing is because I, um, my opinion is the world we live in at the moment is far too tense and far too uptight and people are just offended by the drop of a feather at the moment and i mean I've, i heard the other week or the other day blazing saddles people were trying to get blazing saddles banned because some students had watched it on tv all of a sudden and they thought oh, you can't say stuff like that and it's like well not now you can't but just watch it and and take it for what it is it's not it race it's not racist it's actually taking the mick out of that entire genre of people who were you know it's like the sheriff is a ding. <laughs> you know, that yeah, kind yeah. Of, some of the best things, you know, and it, it, it didn't. It was, it, you know, it, it was perfect, perfect comedy. And I think that's, we, we need that in society. So, and Platoon F, you're right, it's not any of those things because, like you say, with them, um, with Parfait, <laughs> I've, I've listened to you, I've been listening, we'll be talking, I've been listening, I can hear Parfait coming out of this. Hey now, a, couple of, yeah, a couple of times, <laughs> a couple of times, a couple of times you said, ooh, just like that, and it's just it's like ooh, Honestly, ooh. yeah, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you've got Hank Moon as well, who's like transgender, you know, yeah. and that's sort of like, sorts well, sort yeah, kind of, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, no, yes, sort of one of them, yeah, one of them is, <laughs> one of them is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 not rip it, it's not being disrespectful. Like, they, they they all accept it. again. It's the acceptance of that person in that character in that body. Except mm -hmm. for Justin, obviously. Ew. <laughs> yeah, except for Justin. Well, that's the point, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, my, my, my kid is transgender. Right. So, you know, for me to, to break out and start making, you know, harsh fun of that, <laughs> probably not a great idea. No. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, but this was written actually before I knew that. Right. Um, and so, you know, there you go. Right. And uh, uh, my kid's not offended by it. <laughs> <laughs> and she's transgender. So there you go. Yeah. Um, you know, laughed at it. Thought it was funny. So <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, but yeah, Jesden, now he looks so differently. And that's the thing. See, <clears throat> again, I keep jumping back to Queen Arthur, but again, you have Sir Harris in, in Queen Arthur, mm -hmm. staunch conservative, right? And, and everything else. And so when, you know, Queen Arthur is, is, is a, do, do you all have a problem with me wearing, you know, women's clothes? And it's like, uh, well, we're in the theater, sir, so we see it all the time. Everything is cool. Mm -hmm. Well, what about you? And he's like, yes, um, you can wear whatever you want. I don't really care. Do, you know, I have problems of my own. And he goes, I guess, well, what about you, Harris? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just let out no. Again, he goes, well, that was expected. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So it's what it is. I mean, you have to take all sides, though. And yeah. that's kind of, that's to me, that's what makes comedy is you don't, I, <clears throat> one of the things I didn't like about 80s comedy, and, and you still see it a lot today and 90s, uh, or, or, or TV shows, is that um, what they did was every man in every one of those was stupid. You know, um, it, it was just like um, the, the husband is always dumb and everything else. It was funny a couple of times, but then it's like now we have this whole thing where if you watch pretty much every one of these shows, that's what it was. That's what yeah. it is. And you start going, what? And so um, what I try to do is to say, you know, everybody's stupid in their own way. We're all stupid. And that's mm -hmm. how I approach it. I don't approach it from the standpoint of we're all smart in our own way because that's easy. We're all stupid. And we yeah. all do things we all do things that we kind of go oh shit, i wish i hadn't done that i mean there's probably four or five things just on this call <laughs> <laughs> but i mean there's things that happen however you get to a point i think in life where you just kind of go fuck it i've got to own it i did it mm -hmm. I, I said something wrong i did something wrong i own it and if people can't accept that oh well you know and then you move on and that, that's all you can do yeah um but uh but with these characters, I, I looked at them. I try to look at them and go, everybody's looking at them like, what are you, an idiot to Sir Greg Harris? But he's looking back, what are you, an idiot? He's doing the same thing. Because it's from every from every angle is where you can really have comedy. If you only have comedy from one angle, you mm -hmm. are hating, in my mind. 
You, yes. At that point, I'm hating that thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I turn it around and say, it's just as bad from my side as it is from your side, then you start realizing that hopefully when you have conversations with other people, maybe you can start thinking about their perspective as well instead of just your own, which yeah. is hard to do. But that's that's kind of the goal. <laughs> yeah. Because I've got to say, yeah, no, you're right. And, and you do put that across in, in the, everything that I've, you know, the only note can amplitude after the ones that I've read. Um, and I will read the others. And <laughs> so yeah. I'm have to, I'll have to bring you back. Once I've read the others, you're coming back on. <laughs> but yeah, and, and you do put that across. And you do, like you say, you do see all the sides um, from things as well. And, and for example, with Phil, I thought all elves were gay. You know, <laughs> that, right, right. but he, but the now, print, but now, he hold, comes... on. hold on, that was Paul McCartney. <laughs> no, actually, it wasn't. That was uh, John Lennon. That was John Lennon more than anything else. I was like, Where? that wasn't Winston. That's like John Lennon pretending to be Winston. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought all elves were gay. He goes, well, how do you think, how do you think they have kids? Oh, I never thought about that. <laughs> He said, well, you, so you even think that the, the, the women are lesbians? Oh, by the 12, no. <laughs> so it's okay for them not to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, and of course, <laughs> exactly. That just, see, again, what does that do to me? What that does is that shows the ignorance. Yes. Uh, and, and I think it's funny, but at the same time, it shows the ignorance. It's just yeah. like, oh, wait, so all the men can be gay because they are good looking, mm -hmm. but the women because they're good looking, can't be gay. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. In Platoon F, and I've forgotten the name of the character. Oh, on Pleasure Planet, Moustache. Oh, um, yeah, oh. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, pre the Planet F Prefect, isn't it? Oh, no. Uh, you're the one who's, who's good no, with names. I'm, the, I'm just... <laughs> What's going like, on? Oh, no, it's just I, scary. But yeah, but that character as well, it's like, you know, he goes... Oh, you're, you're you're a good bloke. I am not male. <laughs> oh, it's just for the well, yeah, with the mustache. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's just, it's just the mustache. And, yeah. uh, what is okay? Now it's bothering me. I got to figure out who it is. But go ahead, continue asking. <laughs> it's going to bug me now because I can't. Oh no, never mind. But yeah, um, and and say with Justin as well, you've just sort of you've kind of incorporated all that ignorance into one character with Justin, and it's just I mean he's just hilarious. He just makes me laugh so much because it's just so incredibly outrageous in some of the stuff. I love the way you obviously you, you've narrated it. So it's just you say you know they're all talking about something because you guys have done a fantastic job, gay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's like so he's like the pure adolescent thirteen-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. But here's where that came from. That's actually um, you know you hear people say that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and everything. Else. Um, I, by the way, I cannot find this person's name um, anywhere. I, I see everybody else's, uh, but it's just driving me nuts that I can't find the, her. Right? Um, anyway, planet googling this shit. Damn it! Where is she? Um, all right. Well, anyhow, the uh, that happened because I was at a hotel for work, and um, I was sitting down in in the lobby. They had like this little spot where you could eat and they had like this big screen up there and everything else. Mm -hmm. And people were all watching TV and there's a bunch of people in front of me watching the TV and I'm sitting in the back and a commercial came on with that term gay. Right. And basically it was a PC commercial that mm -hmm. came on and it said, you know, <clears throat> don't use that word in that way mm -hmm. because if you do so, um, it's hurtful and everything else, right? And everything else. And so it would say, oh man, that's gay. You know, that's what somebody would say. And everybody yeah. would go, yes, they'd go, oh, that's hurtful and all. And this, this went on for, it was like a two, three minute commercial. It's just on and on and on. It was mm -hmm. like an infomercial almost, right? Yeah. Everybody's dead quiet. They're all eating everything else. As soon as it finished, I went, gay. <laughs> <laughs> And everybody busted out laughing. And that's when I went like this. Oops. <laughs> In my head, I'm going, someone has Tourette's. Right? <laughs> and so I was just like, oh, I should have done that. But it was funny. But as soon as it was done, I was like, yay. Right? And then I was, so as I'm writing this whole thing, every single time, you know, anybody does anything like that, if Justin's there, he's just like, Gay, you know, <laughs> and that's just how he is. So uh, yeah, but yeah. he's got that surfer thing going. Hey man, what's going on? <laughs> See, that's that's how I know just he's just he's great. You can picture the character and everything. And that, yeah. I think there's that scene where they're down on on the planet, and yes, yeah, when they're trying to get Parfait back, and they're in that cave. I mean, that's the other thing as well because obviously all your influences come in, especially with Platoon F, Stella Hike, 
you know, Star Trek stuff. I was just like, no, oh, yeah. I, was, I was like, awesome play on words there. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the red shirt's going down. It's like, yes, yeah, so Zandu was, he was un- unusually was wearing our away uniform, which was the red shirt. <laughs> exactly. That's it. This is the decree. Nobody's allowed to wear red shirts anymore. Yeah. <laughs> why, why not just make that decree ahead of time? We would have saved a lot of lives. Yeah. <laughs> it's absolutely, it's, you know, it's, it's so, so perfect. But yeah, down on, the, on that thing, I think it was, um, they're trying to rescue Pa. Uh, yeah, and they're trying to every time. He, I think Justin was the only one who could mention any like dong or wang or anything. <laughs> it's every time. Oh yeah, yeah. Was, with was, the uh, with the speakers. Yeah, yeah. And that, like, I was thinking of just Austin Powers then because of that's, it was just that's, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, it was oh, yeah. totally in mind of that. Absolutely. Look at that rocket over there. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the size of that dong. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it's well, pretty- it's but that that's Austin Powers, but that's also a nod back to Airplane because in Airplane yes. they did that too. Mm-hmm. So yeah, or either the Airplane or Naked Gun or I Police think, uh, Squad. It might have been Police Squad. I think it was Police but, Squad on that one. So you're going back. Yeah, oh, so, yeah, they were, they were just oh, Leslie Nielsen. Oh, just, just, oh yeah, <laughs> which was the best part of those was that he was a serious dramatic actor. He was, yeah, he wasn't a comedy actor. He was a professional no, trained, yeah, serious actor. Yeah, none of them were. If you look at um, Airplane, the original Airplane, they were all serious actors. Mm-hmm. And that's what made it funny because they were just like, he said, well, how are we supposed to say, you want us to be comedic? No, just deliver the lines, you know, dry like you would. Yeah. And so, you know, that's that's why it all worked. No, and don't call me Shirley. <laughs> that's funnier than if he goes, no, and don't call me Shirley. You know, I mean, exactly. Be like, yeah. That's not funny now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was, it was a dry pack. It's like, how yeah, was it? Nervous? Yes. First time? No, I've been nervous many times. <laughs> 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 well, now, Loaded Weapon, two scenes in Loaded Weapons are my favorite, made me laugh out loud so hard, was when he they walk in, uh, Samuel L. Jackson and um, not uh, Sheen, uh, not Sheen, uh, Amelia Westerman, yeah. they they walk into the uh, hotel, and the guy's like, what are you busting my balls for? What are you doing there? And they haven't even said anything to him yet, right? And they're going like this, and he goes up to him, and they go like this, he goes, look, look, we just need, we need some help. Have you seen this girl? He goes, yeah, is that her? No, that's her picture. Right. <laughs> It's like, ah! right? And then the second one, Samuel L. Jackson is talking to his chief and his chief, his captain. His captain's in there um, eating salad or whatever. And he goes like this. He goes, listen, there's more behind this, Captain. I'm telling you right now. I know this is what got her killed. You don't mm-hmm. think it was the bullets? <laughs> it's so dumb. But it's like, yes, I love this stuff. It's great. So, yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? I oh, know, exactly. I'm trying to raise my son on that kind of comedy as well. My wife just sits there shaking her head because it's like he's, he's in hysterics watching it. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Which it's is great. great. Which is why I need to get the I buy. That's why I'm, I'll be buying the, the physical books of yours so I can pass them to him so he can read them because he Thanks. loves reading. And I think he's going right, well, to find them hilarious. <laughs> well, it's funny. I, I got a... Um, uh, a message from my grandmother who said, "Oh, I brought, I, I saw this ad, and I bought this for my grandson, mm-hmm. no granddaughter, to read." And I'm just like, "It was a Queen Arthur ad," and I'm just uh, like, "Uh, why?" <laughs> <laughs> and then she, she was just like, "Well, it just looked fun," and I was just like, "Look at the ad. It says he likes the feel of the uh, frilly on his willy." I said, <laughs> "You know, you really said, want that?" Is not. I said, "I said, how old is your granddaughter?" She's eight. I said, you don't want her to read this. <laughs> said, there is a lot of dirty stuff in these books. And mm-hmm. You don't want that, you know. And she went, oh, I didn't know. And I was just like, well, do a little research. I mean, yeah. read the description for crying out loud. <laughs> It'll tell you on the back. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, your kid's going to be super progressive, which is great. But <laughs> just saying. Um, but, you know, whatever. People want to please. I mean, I have uh, uh, some friends who are like, uh, some uh, some readers who say, you know, I, I uh, have my uh, 12-year-old reading your Platoon F stuff. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, uh, I, said, I don't mind. We've been cussing around him since we were seven, since he was seven. And I was just like, okay, <laughs> whatever. And and that's just the way it is. Which, yeah. honestly, kids hear more of this stuff before they're 10 than you probably know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. I, mean? I think <laughs> I'll start mine off with Owen and Oaken, to be fair. I think Platoon F might be just a little bit, a year or two maybe yet. <laughs> A year or two out there. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, and you could also, uh, like I said, Starliner, which is going to be yeah, changed yeah. to uh, Church of Automation, I think is what we're calling it. But, um, yeah, that's going to be changed over because that one's a lot like Onan again. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, the rest of them, maybe a little, <laughs> might want to wait a little, little while on that. Excellent, excellent. I mean, you know, it's just, it's, I'm sort of drawing draw this so close to an end now, but it's, because, I mean, your characterizations, that's the main thing for me, it's the characterizations, because that's what Thanks. draws me into a book. And, in every one I've read, they're so, so versatile, they're so in-depth, 
brilliant. I mean, I can't even name my favorite. I mean, in Platoon F, I don't think I could name my favorites. I think obviously I love Jestin because he's just that. <laughs> that you know the gay this is that it just yeah. makes me laugh and it's you know because oh come on man because i've got my dong you know what I mean? Cause that's yeah. it. <laughs> exactly and he shoves He's it in the really... he shoves it in the reactor to stop the world from <laughs> <laughs> i just never that bit out and he does certain stuff <laughs> because justin and what he does with certain things and you know <laughs> exactly and then but, bit, uh... i think geezer's one of my best because i think that guy that characterization of him just as a salty a salty u.s navy <laughs> so obviously, sorry, it says you know it's SMC Navy, but yeah, yeah with, with right. the ta- you can imagine the tattoos and the chief, you know, he's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and up, he's top, metallic. Top? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, well, he's kind of a mix with um, uh, he's he's based on a robot mixed with Eeyore. Right. <laughs> that, that was the idea, right? So he everything is everything has to end with a down note. Yeah. You know, <laughs> even if he's excited, I'm really excited about what I've just done. You know, and you're just like, and it's really hard to read that too. When you're seeing that he's excited, yet you have to end it like that. Mm-hmm. That's really strange. But Geezer, uh, yeah, absolutely love Geezer. Um, he's he's uh, a lot of fun. And it was interesting because, you know, when Chris saw Platoon F, he's like, okay, but then we're going to have to be a lot more serious about how we're doing this because this is science fiction, science fiction and blah, 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 it's not fantasy. You can't just do something. I was just like, wrong. <laughs> and he, goes, he says, what do you mean? And I just said, okay, imagine it this way. Uh, you have this robot, right? And he basically just sticks a bunch of wires together in various configurations. And he has no idea what's going to happen. And then all of a sudden, boom, time travel. Yeah. And he goes, Chris is like, I love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. And so from that point on, um, you know, basically it's like, oh, well, wait. When we wanted to do the second book, um, or was it third book? Yeah, third book, uh, SSMC Voyeur. They had to get to that other plan. And he goes, well, how's that going to work? <laughs> he says, because that other planet, he says, they don't have like, you know, faster than light travel. Mm-hmm. We don't have all this kind of stuff. He's because he's going to be like 80 years old. I said, I know. And he goes, well, how are we going to solve that? I mean, we got to think this through and everything else. I said, no, we don't. See, you got to quit thinking that way. And he was just like, what do you mean? I said, geezer. And he yeah. goes, what? I said, geezer goes, hey, guess what? <laughs> we can now transport instantly anywhere we want to go. And he goes like this, well, that's just a cop out. I said, no, that's comedy. And that's what we're doing. That's the whole point is to take everything that we want in Platoon F and make it as ridiculous as hell. I mean, it's how you ended up with the overseers, right? Yeah. It's oh, yeah. like, I mean, how dumb is that, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. It works. The, 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 well, and, and have you listened to the whole Platoon F? Yep, yep. So you see how it starts from the beginning and literally closes all the way nine books later. Right? Yeah. It was only starting to be a five book series. Right. That was all it was going to be. Okay. It was just gonna, actually, it was one book. And then it is, okay, we're going to go a five book series. And that was going to end right there. And it did. Mm-hmm. It ended there. And then we were like getting so many people saying, we want more, we want more. I was like, okay. And so then we got gave the next book. And then people were into that and so on. I said, well, wait, if we do this and we bring these guys in, then I can see how we can link all of this together. And I mm-hmm. said, if you just imagine it this way, and I said, and that would actually link together how everything was created, how everything was made, the whole deal. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, I, I don't know how we're going to pull this off. I said, I don't either, but that's why we have a robot who can just stick wires and shit. We'll figure it out. <laughs> you know? And so literally every time we run into a problem in mm-hmm. Platoon Up, the beauty of that is you don't sit there and, toil for weeks and weeks trying to go how would the math work how would this work and how would the science I, we just go we don't need that we have you a go, robot you go, case <laughs> just goes <"Doo-doo-doo." laughs> solved right <laughs> and it's just like and then and then when the things break down well fix it i don't know how to fix it <laughs> he goes what do you mean you, you made the damn thing what's your point <laughs> 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 it's like you might remember I just kind of stick wires together or stuff. I have no idea how this shit works. Yeah. It's like when he types in the coordinates, isn't it? He types the coordinates, and they go to yeah, this is a spoiler for anyone. He types the coordinates into something that goes to the wrong place. And he goes, That should have been seven point seven one four. You got it. He goes, You got it, top dog. <laughs> you got no worries. you got me guys can't say that. I can't do can't do geese yeah. It's like yeah. you got me top dog. It's like Got it, again. got it wrong again. What, what can I do? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? Fire me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and then he, when he asked for a raise, <laughs> he's like, when am I going to get my raise? Oh, sure. When yeah. you need something, it has to be done last week. Yeah. But when I'm asking for something, it could be months from now. <laughs> 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 exactly. Yeah. Oh, well, 
that's corporate <laughs> life coming back in. Oh that's, yeah, yeah, definitely, that. definitely. And the bureaucracy. I mean, you, you know, that's what I mean. You've got corporate. You've got the rail system, obviously in Platoon F. The rails. That's just pure stereotypical government or bureaucracy and then obviously in Gappy yes. yeah and Gappy as well going in to get his licenses for the you know if you're taking it back to Owen and Oaken it's just a per- it's just so <laughs> sorry just think that's just yeah okay so let's go back rails mm-hmm. your first impression when you saw the rails I was just like what the <laughs> <That's> the- <laughs> exactly <laughs> All right, so that is the number one thing that turns most people off. Believe it or not, of that series, it's not the it's not the oh he's a homophobe thing. It's a it's the rails, and I always go like this. That's the point is to show how freaking stupid it is. And and if but then I start I quit complaining about that because I finally come back and I just went like this. If you can't get that, mm-hmm. I don't want you reading my books anyway. Because you're not going to get them, and it's why waste your time and why why get a bad review? Just go away. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then it's, it's the second bit of your, yeah, because it's not just the rails. Then you've got to listen to the second bit where, you, where it's, it's explaining the fact that they've got the artificial. <laughs> <laughs> you <even> have the sounds <laughs> because they, they don't actually sound. make those sounds, but they they have those sounds purely to make the people feel better. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because that's the way it is, yeah. right? It's just like you're sitting on it. It's like there's no sounds at all. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> <It's> dumb. <laughs> but, but it works, and that's the, yeah. So I mean, that's like hence why I'm probably a good a good reader and what's on your rifle because it's my <laughs> it's my humor down to the ground. It's it's. <laughs> Well, it's funny. You're my only fan, so this is kind of cool. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm I was like, wait, wait, honey, we had a sale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got one. And now the guy wants to interview you, is he? I have no idea. No, that was really cool. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, when people get it, that you just know that they're on the same weird wavelength you are. And if they don't get it, that's cool. I, You know, I, I get it. I, there's, there's humor I don't like yeah you know it's it, we're all going to be different in that in that respect and and that's just the way it is but um so i get it i mean you know some of the really crazy harsh harsh humor kind of turns me off so i get it i mean everybody's you know different in in how they are and um you know i'm not trying to say that you know what well, screw you you can go away whatever you know I'll, I'll, I'll say something like that but it depends on how the person approaches it if a person comes back and and it's just like hey i just it's just isn't for me that's cool mm-hmm. great mm-hmm. If a person comes back and hates on you just because they don't agree with your humor, well, you know, <laughs> that's, that's just how I see it. It's just like, okay, whatever. There's things that you do that other people don't agree with, but if they turn around and hate, you know, bash you for it, mm-hmm. you're going to be defensive too, and that's just the way it is. Yeah, and that's yeah. what this world's. What I hate about this world is the fact that's what people don't let you have an opinion. They don't let you enjoy what you want to do, and they don't, you know, they've got to force. They're the type of people who force their opinions and their ways of life on other people and they you know without understanding that everyone should have their own opinions that's what makes the world an interesting place is that we can have different things we can enjoy different comedies we can you know because like you say i mean this comedy i can't stand which i know other people find absolutely hilarious but i just look at it and i think that's just not funny (laughs) (laughs) but stuff like this the airplanes and everything I, i tears streaming out my eyes because that's right but then but then your wife is like i don't Get this. And my wife's yeah. the same way. She with yeah. airplane. She's just like, you know, like, but she'll laugh at the other stuff that, you know, I, that we both enjoy. Mm-hmm. And then she'll laugh at some stuff that I'm like, like, you know, so it's, it's all different in, in how we, how we view the world. And that's totally cool. I, you know, it's funny. <clears throat> um, I have conservative friends and liberal friends. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm kind of more moderate leaning, probably liberal. And, um, they talk about, uh, you know, all the stuff and they're trying to convince me of their side and they're trying to convince me of their side and everything else. Right. It's just how it works. And uh, I finally came to the conclusion that conservatism is essentially you have to believe what we believe mm-hmm. and uh, liberalism or, or you know, uh, basically that side. Right. Democratic, whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's more you can believe whatever you want as long as it's what we believe. So <laughs> it's, it's really two sides of the same coin. It's mm-hmm. just that, um, you know, it's that way. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, moderates are any different in their own beliefs. But my point is, is that we all we all approach the world from, you know, what what our personal core beliefs are. Right. And everything yeah. that happens is, is based on that. And over time, our, our our world expands a little bit. We start kind of growing and, and and so on. Or some of us don't. We, we actually go the other direction mm-hmm. and so on. <clears throat> but. That's the whole point of all of the characters in this book is not just, oh, everybody just be 
like me, you know, middle line progressive, and then, um, you know, just bash everything else. It, mm-hmm. It's a case of, no, put yourself in these shoes for a while, put yourself in these shoes for a while and all that. And when you see that kind of interaction and you put some haha to it, hopefully what you're also seeing, at, you know, when you get out of it is that each one of these books, believe it or not, has a message in it that's beyond just laugh. Um, it, it's more like, this is all ridiculous, everyone. Why are you doing this? It's so ridiculous. And even if you are super conservative or super liberal, you're both being ridiculous. And the moderates, too. You're all being ridiculous in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and some of you are right. But you can't admit that this guy's right because he's on the other side. or, or You know what I'm saying? Uh, so it, it tries to, to push that across uh, yeah. as best it can without being preachy. Mm-hmm. Like I just was. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, actually using meetings and, and team meetings and stuff. I'm doing talking about talking about change management or whatever. I use a beach ball analogy. I saw it in a convention once, and the guy said, and I thought it's the best ever explanation, which just sums up what you've just said. Imagine there's a beach ball in the room, the size of the room. I can't see you. You can't see me. What colours can you see? You might say blue, red, and green. I can see yellow, orange, and white. Who's right? Yeah. Both of us are right. Well, both of us could be, you know, right in our own ways. But what we need to do is, and this whole, this is what society is trying to just take a step back. And like you've just said, just step in their shoes, step in these, see it from both angles and then crush it so that the colours are all mixed. And then you can come up with what, what it should be. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Yeah. I was was just thinking that's that's how I kind of, in meetings that I've done and stuff, I kind of use that analogy and it just, it just fits perfectly with how you said you, and it should be no matter what side you're on, just what are we doing? It's just take a step. Just <laughs> yeah, take a step back. From, yeah. And you know what? Allow some humor to come in. Yeah. Because humor does break down walls. It really does. I mean, as long as it's not hate, but I mean, it, you know, humor does break down walls. It's funny. You were talking about that. We, we were, um, I remember walking down the hall at uh, the company I worked for and <laughs> there was a big sign that said sexual harassment training. And I was just <laughs> like, man, I've always wanted to learn how to do that. Right. <laughs> That's just gone through you my head to something. Yeah, exactly. It was just like, sweet. I always want to learn how to do that, right? <laughs> right. And my, my boss was at that time, you know, a lady and, and everything else. So she, she, I, I said it out loud. I said, great. I've always wanted to learn how to do that, right? And she looks up at me and she goes, what? And I was just like, well, they're training us how to do sexual harassment correctly. And she, she starts laughing and she goes, that's not what it means, you idiot. I said, are you sure? <laughs> and she was just like, you know, she got that I would be sarcastic after mm-hmm. a second, but she didn't get it at first. She thought I was being serious. And I'm just like, why would I really want that? You know? <laughs> but anyway, it was really funny because uh, of how her reaction was. She's like, what? <laughs> yeah. That, that was, welcome to my brain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I'm going to ask you a signature question here, John. This is um, oh. this is totally separately to everything that has got anything to do with the books that you've done. <laughs> I had two, this is not going to throw you, don't do it. This, it's, I, two years ago, I had someone on my show who's worked with Jim Henson on The Muppet Show for 30 years. Um, and he's, in turn of the Jedi, he, uh, you probably know because you're the same sort of, Nine Numb. You know the guy, the monkey guy, Return of the Jedi, he flew the Millennium Falcon at the end oh, of yeah, Orlando yeah, Prison. Yeah, 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 of course. With the red and blue suit, yeah, him, monkey yeah. face. He's yeah. a great guy, Mike, Mike uh, Quinn. But he came on the show, someone sent the question in, and I was like, you know what, I had such... A laugh with a question. I've asked every single person oh, since. Oh, <laughs> so here you go. Before you go, before you go there, have you seen the Happy Time Murders? <laughs> yes. Oh my God, that's funny. <laughs> it's, it's dirty. It's very oh, dirty. <laughs> I, I didn't know. expect it's it like to be that. Enough. Yeah, it's bad enough. It's a Muppet film, but dirty as hell. I mean, I most of the time we were sitting there like. <laughs> and yet laughing at the same I loved it yeah I, I was it. the same way I couldn't believe some of the obviously some of the scenes it was like the, the, when he got shut in the office with a girl it was expl- oh, I was just like <laughs> <laughs> well, see the thing is it's like when I was watching we were watching it honestly we were so shocked it was hard to laugh but at the yeah. same time we're going <laughs> 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 yeah, we couldn't help it <laughs> exactly but did you see Thumb Wars no no I've not seen that one oh god you gotta go see Thumb Wars I, it, it's just you can find it on YouTube Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. It makes fun of Star Wars, and it's all thumbs. All right, okay. Freaking hilarious. <laughs> it's really, really good. You're going to yeah. love it. Anyway, go on with your question. Sorry. Sorry. I was going to say, if on that, I want to go and see Avenue Q as well, which is the live puppet show, which is the adult one. Avenue Q. Oh. Try and look on my... It's, it's, um, there's the songs in there. I've got some, one of the... It goes, um, 
there's a oh, sorry, this is diverting again. She just she starts yeah. singing a song. She's a teacher and she's being fast. The internet. She goes, the internet is so great. And then you got a big monster for porn. <laughs> <Come sing. laughs> or just, porn. Yeah, he does exactly just like that. <laughs> and she's like, going, <laughs> it just carries on. And every time she finishes the thing, goes blah blah blah. Goes for porn. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He goes, what? why? Why you think the net was born? Porn, porn, porn. <laughs> It's true. That's the only thing you really make money at. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just keeping that, yeah, look out for Avenue Q because that's, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the question, like, the question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, if you could have a Muppet created after your own personality, oh, crap. what Muppet would it be? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. It, oh, woo. It, are, okay, so you, are you saying like you take the Muppet? That's already out there, and you say that's the Muppet that's mostly you, you or you could do, or you could create your own Muppet complete, <sighs> based on others, or you just not even based on any Muppet. Oh man, <laughs> I guess it would have to be kind of an amalgamation of Muppets. I, I do that, that's how I usually work. The old guys that are, are on the balconies, Stat Statler and Waldorf, yeah, <laughs> right, right. The so one of those guys, uh, mixed with um, uh, the Grouch. <laughs> uh, mixed with, I can't remember the guy's name, I don't even think he talks, or if he does, I can't remember, but he's kind of a thin little dude with like the little fluffy hair, and he's always going like this. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, he's like super fat. He's like Pepe, Pepe, Pepe the Prawn kind of guy, no? Yeah, that, yeah, 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 that yeah, kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah, that kind of a thing, right? And then finally, uh, I don't think it's Elmo, it's the one who goes, uh, um, uh, let's see, if you give me your crayons, I'll give you my truck! That one. <laughs> I don't remember his name, but I think it would be kind of a mix between all of those. I, I definitely am not Big Bird. <laughs> definitely not that. Um, yeah, so I couldn't. I couldn't just pick one, but I would say kind of like mixing all of those things together. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, certainly not a Kermit. Um, you know <laughs> what does Kermit's well, fingers there, smell like? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> pork. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, that's terrible. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess that that's a good question. That's a good one. <laughs> cool. Fair enough. And is there anything you'd like to say to people before I stop recording, John, to, who have been watching this or who are listening to it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope in some way <laughs> I hope in some way I've offended you. Um, no, uh, let's see. I, I guess what I would say is this. <clears throat> If, if you do check out my books, if you like them, awesome. If you hate them, awesome. If you're in the middle, I screwed up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much all I've got to say. <laughs> John, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. I had such a blast. It's so much fun. Uh, and I was really, yeah, really thankful and really grateful to chat to you. Uh, like I say, I love your books. And they're just brilliant. I can't wait to get to more and read more. And guys, if you're out there, please look up John P. Logston and look up Platoon F or Owen Oaken. O N O N O K I N series. Also look at the detective, the paranormal detective the series as well. Get out there, read the books, listen to the audiobooks. They're all on Amazon, they're all on Kindle, uh, they're on Audible. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. So anyway, um yeah, just a fun chat. So yeah. Thank you so much, John, once again for your time and I hope everyone enjoyed watching and listening this. This has been Chris Gordon with John P. Logston on Hellblazer Beers. <laughs>